Ableton Live really revolutionized what was possible in a DAW by putting the DAW at the heart of the creative process. So in contrast to, say, Logic or Pro Tools, which have changed a bit over the years, but traditionally were designed essentially for tracking and mixing purposes where the creative artist, the band, the producer would already more or less have the materials written and then come in and those were the platforms upon which it was recorded. Ableton was designed as the nerve center, the hub of the creative process. And so many of you watching this course are likely to be producers mixing your own productions, which is more and more often the case. So again, with those other DAWs, it used to be that not only would there be these discrete phases where people are writing music elsewhere and then it's committed, captured, recorded to that DAW, there were also dedicated mix engineers. That was their whole job, was just mixing. They had no other role in the creative process. They had great ears, great analytical faculties, and they were paid to apply that in the mix. Now, of course, that still exists in the industry, but less and less now that production has been democratized and many people producing on a platform like Ableton Live are expected to do their own mix or maybe simply can't afford to pay another engineer to do it. So while many of you perhaps are mixing stems of other people's music in live, I'm going to approach this course from the angle of a producer and I'm going to be mixing a finished arrangement that my friend Rick Bull and I produced under our project name Concubine. Now, I think it's very important to delineate the mixing process from other stages in the production creative process. For me, I find it easiest to complete material if I divide the process into more or less three discrete phases. The first phase is creative. The second phase is arrangement editing. So after I have captured a performance from the session view and recorded that into the arrange view, capture my creativity, then I can arrange and edit it. And once I've arranged and edited it, finally then I can apply the analytical mindset and critical listening required to complete the mix to my satisfaction. Now, I think it's really important for me to separate these phases because they involve very different uh, modes of consciousness, if you will. So as Ernest Hemingway, I believe, famously wrote, write drunk, edit sober. So if I'm in that initial creative phase and I'm worrying too much about how to compress and EQ a sound, then I'm switching my mode of thinking too much. I'm getting too analytical. And this can get in the way of just the ability to get into a state of creative flow, which I think is really important. Now, for us perfectionists out there, that can be a difficult mindset to change, knowing that a sound isn't exactly perfect. But take solace in the fact that don't worry. You're going to fix it later. There's time set aside, a discrete part of the process where you are going to perfect that sound. But if you get bogged down in those details too soon, you're going to reduce the chance of entering that creative flow that's so important at that stage of your production. So having said that, you know, there are many hats we've all become accustomed to wearing as modern producers with all the luxuries a modern DAW affords us. And so, yeah, essentially, I don't like wearing all those hats at the same time. I've got my artist hat in the creative phase, my producer hat in the arrangement and editing phase, and then my mix engineer hat during the mixing phase, which we will be exploring in depth throughout this course. But if you get too bogged down in the mixing as you go, I mean, it's inevitable that you will want to make a few little tweaks to sounds as you go to get them in the general vicinity of how you want them to sound. But I've seen a lot of people fall prey to getting too bogged down in that, putting the cart before the horse, if you will, and then they can't ever get out of that creative state because they're too bogged down in the mixing. The mixing, if you put it at the end of your process, you'll have a lot more fun, and mixing can be something that you look forward to in the end.